Welcome back everybody. This is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. I'm only getting a video today for you all to talk about uh, basically one of Singer's most legendary designs. Many of you have seen these machines. Um, the one on the left is one I've just purchased and I'll be making a video on that machine, this machine itself and why I purchased it and some of the issues I found with it, but I bought it anyway. Uh, and then the, the machine on the right is the Singer 15-30. Many of you have already seen this machine as I've been, uh, I had made videos on the machine and it is currently still available for sale. Uh, but I wanted to show these two machines next to each other uh, because I wanted to talk about one of the great things about Singer and that is the fact that when they had a machine in production and it was successful, they kept it in production for a very long time. Now you could certainly argue that like, well, they made changes. Yes, they did. And some of those changes were significant, but not to the overall mechanics of how the machine worked. It had more to do with obviously with power. The very first uh, Singer 15 was the Singer 15-1. And somewhere around the late 1870s, Singer produced their first. For those of you who are new to uh, sewing machines, or certainly to the Singer 15, uh, one of the easiest ways to, to notice that it's a 15 is that unlike many of the other models that have their tension upper thread tension dials on the front, the 15 has it on the side, on the left side. And that is something that is consistent, whether you're talking about this model, this is a this particular treadle model I have, is from 1905. It was made in Montreal, Quebec, in Canada, and they only made about a thousand of them. Um, when I looked up the serial number, I thought, oh, uh, which is unusual. That doesn't mean that Singer didn't make a lot of uh, 15 uh, machine. They didn't. They made plenty of Singer 15 models, but in that particular plant in that year, they made 1,000. Uh, but they had factories all over the planet making these machines, and so that doesn't mean this this is rare. It's just a, a fairly small production run for a company like Singer, at least for that plant in Quebec. Uh, the model on the left, my new acquisition, is a Singer 15-91. Now, my particular, uh, just kind of wanted to talk to you guys about the 15 in general. There were a number of Singer 15 models over the years, all uh, are mechanically uh, essentially the same, but they have different features because when you when you make something, remember the late the late eighteen um, seventies until about nineteen sixty and beyond. So we're talking about a machine whose whose essential core mechanical design was in production for about eighty years. That is just incredible, right? It's like it was what. It's hard to believe, but it's true. Um, and, you know, this, I think, is part of where Singer's reputation for uh, making things that were tried and true comes. And there were also some criticisms that, well, why doesn't Singer just get rid of those old designs and create new ones? I don't agree uh, entirely with those criticisms. I think it's wonderful that they did this. And definitely as a sewing machine restorer, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, but obviously, when you're going back into the 1800s, the, the first machines would have been either treadle powered, but you could also order some with a uh, hand crank on the, uh, a hand crank would be installed uh, uh, on the wheel so that you could uh, uh, turn it with your hand if you wanted to do that. And some of those hand cranks were often, you could put a hand crank on a machine and a table. Sometimes the machines would be sold in a carry case and you could, um, you could, uh, you would often find those little uh, hand cranks on the uh, those 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 machines that came in a carry case. But when you look at these, and I know that the 1591 here looks it looks bigger, but it's actually just because it's not installed in a machine. They are essentially, for the most part, the same size. There may be some variation in the casting over the years, but it is incredible, even with the changes that have been made, that that the machine's basic uh, engineering did not change. So again, the first Singer 15 would have been the Sing Singer 15-1. Uh, and then um, 
they would come out with a series of models, the, the 1511, the 1522, and then uh, in 1905, uh, the machine that you see here on my on the on the right, my Singer 15-30, uh, it went into production. It's kind of funny to say it's actually, uh, you know, the whole design was already, I don't know, about 25 years old when this one came out. You know, you go, oh, that's a young one, um, and you would see obviously you would see changes in things uh, like. Uh, sometimes they would change the bobbin case configuration a little bit. You'll see, <clears throat> definitely see a difference in decals. Uh, sometimes you will see a, a machine called the 115, and that is not a Singer 15 because it has a different, um, different type of engineering when it comes to its hook and shuttle. Okay, so the hook and shuttle on a 115 is a rotary style. And I believe I have, uh, I did some uh, early videos showing uh, a Singer 115 I had, and it is, of course, rotary. Uh, it looks just like a Singer 15, and it has the, the tension dials on the left. And when you first look at it, you think, wow, that's, I, I was fooled early on when I got it. I thought it was a Singer 15 until I realized that it had a very different hook and shuttle. But they're, they're very similar in terms of their body uh, styling. Things like decals would change over the years. Uh, and again, you know, even though this is 1905, uh, remember this is before the mass adoption of electrification in homes. And so of course you would have trellis for sale. Uh, in my, my video catalog, if you will, I actually made a video some time ago, uh, one of my early outdoor videos where I made, uh, I, I demonstrated a Singer 15-75. And that, would, that particular machine came about, um, I want to say, probably in the 50s. And it's when they changed the body style. Uh, mine was in black. They started doing lighter colors. But it was basically a Singer 15. Um, the 1575 had a rear-mounted motor with a belt. Um, and you will see all, a lot of variations with Singer 15s. So the 1588 could either be a treadle or an electric. If it was electric, it had, again, a rear-mounted motor, and it used a sewing belt, like most sewing machines do. Um, now, the 15-90 uh, the also has a rear-mounted motor and belt. But the 1591, the one you see here on your left, is, uh, was most commonly found in the United States. Um, they're more common, common to the US than in places like Canada and other countries. The 1591, of course, has Singer's very lauded uh, direct drive sewing machine motor, what today many people affectionately call a potted motor. Singer didn't call it that, but that's okay. We'll, we'll talk about the motor a little bit more. And there were other 15s, by the way. Uh, the, the 15 series was a very long-lived series. They even did a, um, a potted motor design for the 15-75, and they called it the 15-125. So, again, they were making these designs for a very long time. Now, the 1591 that you see uh, on your left, it is circa late 1940s. This would have been made after the Second World War, I believe. And... Basically, one of the key differences here is that it does not use a belt. Any of you who are familiar with these models, um, you already know this. But some of you don't. You might like, well, what's the difference? They all look the same. One of the key ways to tell when you're looking for a 1591 versus, say, a later version of this treadle, right? Let's say you see a machine that's got the same decals as this one but it's either in a, a treadle or maybe it's got an electric motor in the back with a uh, traditional motor belt. Uh, one of the ways to tell when you're looking at it, let's say you see one online for sale and all they do is give, maybe they give you one picture. Look for this here. What you're going to see is what looks like a little, uh, looks like an upside down can with a very large knurled, um, basically it's a, it's a screw cap, if you will. And this is, of course, where the bearings um, 
uh, grease goes for the motor, for the motor bearings. And uh, when we turn around, of course, you're not going to see a belt because it doesn't use one. On the, <clears throat> on the back side of this hand wheel is the same Textolite gear that I recently showed on my Singer 403 series. As we turn around, you'll see, of course, uh, you see a light fixture here. Uh, back on the side for a minute, you're going to see this is the three pin terminal that many of you who know Singer vintage machines know this. It's, uh, it's a joy to work with compared to other machines electrically, at least that's what I found. And then, of course, here is the motor that we today uh, commonly refer to as a potted motor. Looks like a little pot. Um, if I can zoom back out, you can actually see what it is I'm trying to talk about here. Um, so this is, people think it looks like a little pot and that's what they call it. Later versions, they would even do away with the little decal here, right? And I was looking at production numbers and, you know, like I said, basically as we get to the end of the 1950s, Singer uh, had been producing a lot of their older designs in black um, at at least one of their factories somewhere around the world, and they kept doing it. So when you see the new uh, state-of-the-art 1950s slantomatic machines like my 403A, uh, that's in beige and you know oyster oyster white. They're starting to do lighter colors and trying to get get with the the fashions of the 50s. They were still making these old Ironside machines, and a lot of companies, you know, didn't have the production capacity. You know, when the new model came out, they discontinued the old. They, you know, the patents were gone. Singer kept making them. Uh, it's amazing to think that the Singer 15, not necessarily the 1591. But the 15s were in production through 1960 and even past that. And at first glance, you think, gosh, you know, who in the world would need that at this point? Plenty of people were still buying straight stitch machines. Um, and what about treadles? You think, why in the world were treadles in production? Because, you know, the, country, the North America had, and, and Europe... Western Europe had largely become electrified by the 1930s and 40s, at least in you know your cities, your major urban areas. But there were, were many places in the world where people either did not have electricity or didn't have reliable electricity. And that's sadly, I mean, that's even true today in some parts of the world. And so you can see the, the need for a treadle. And again, it's just, it's just incredible that Singer just kept on making some of these designs. They did have new models, right? They had to compete with the competition was putting pressure on Singer to innovate, to come out with new features. Um, and when I show off the, the 403 that I'm still restoring, uh, I'll demonstrate some of those differences. But it's just amazing that Singer could make an economic case for producing a design that they had been producing for a very long time. And obviously they had amortized or recovered their original costs of development, obviously. And they just kept on making them over and over again, which is a great blessing to those of us who want to fix them or restore them because parts are available. I'm going to talk more in another video about this potted motor design. Uh, Singer is the only manufacturer that I'm aware of that for home sewing machines, Again, the, the home or the domestic class of sewing machines, they're the only ones that did these direct drive motors. It was pretty fancy stuff. Most of the other manufacturers did not. And I have to tell you that <clears throat> I would say of all the 15s I have <clears throat> overhauled, they're all tough machines. All Singer 15s can sew heavy fabric and can do it very powerfully. The... Uh, the treadle has a tremendous amount of power, and that's because of that massive, heavy cast iron flywheel that is the treadle wheel underneath. Um, but the Singer 1591 with the potted motor, uh, it is the most powerful domestic sewing machine I have ever come across. That doesn't mean it's the ultimate or the perfect machine for you. Maybe you don't need that. but. If you do, if you need a machine that is going to be the toughest thing you can get before you move to an industrial, this is it. Uh, I have seen some Kenmores that have uh, the dual belt system, those wonderful Kenmore motors, um, 
and the extra uh, space under the presser foot, those machines can really do some incredible sewing. But for just sheer, just sheer um, massive, you know, power, uh, the 1591 is it. Uh, I think I mentioned before, I had a client who we tried every machine, including a Singer 15 with an extra powerful motor and a belt, and it would not it would not sew through the webbing and the leather that that the that she had for a tote bag and i said well we got one more to try and so i had i went ahead and finished a, a restoration of a 1591 that i had at the time and i tried it and it went through so now many of the vintage sewing machines are going to sew pretty much any project you want so if you don't have one of these it doesn't mean oh well i've got to go out and get a 1591 no i don't think so but if you've tried vintage sewing machines, all steel machines that are so powerful and it won't sew them, try the 1591 because if this won't sew it, you need an industrial, right? I mean, that's this is as good as it gets when it comes to power. Uh, that doesn't mean it's the best machine for everyone because remember, as I've mentioned in many of my videos, all of these machines have something they do just really wonderfully and often better than others. So it really depends on the kind of sewing you're doing, what you want, what you need. Um, and uh, again, this is just incredible. 80 years of production. And uh, again, this was not the first, but from 1905, uh, let's say 1948, right? So you're looking at, uh, you know, not quite uh, 40 years difference. And like I say, many of the parts are interchangeable, not all of them. You know, particularly, you know, you'll notice that the bobbin winder changed over time. Uh, they added a numbered dial on the tension assembly. This 1905 model did not have it. There's changes in the, in, um, not really so much the size of the plate, but this plate is smooth. This one has a sort of a, a filigree uh, design to it. Uh, you know, you, again, you can find differences. One of the big differences to note here is the, the size of the weight of the hand wheel. Uh, remember that a hand wheel is really a big pulley, and you needed this weight with the with the treadle version. Once you got over to the uh, to the to the potted motor, the direct drive version, you didn't need the weight because a lot of the power was coming from that wonderful direct drive motor. So again, uh, you see. You do see some differences. Obviously, you can go into reverse. They had added, ooh, added reverse. You could go up, and then with this model and some of the 201s, you, you could even just stay in reverse if you wanted to. It was called direct feed. Um, this model, of course, you don't have reverse. You can adjust the stitch length, just like, you know, by loosening this knob and moving this lever. Over here, you can adjust stitch length as well. But again, these are changes Singer would make over the years but I just can't get over the fact that, that something so tried and true could stay in production essentially unchanged. Yes, some, you know, around the edges, they did make some improvements, but um, underneath, she's essentially the same design. Just incredible. Uh, the most copied sewing machine design in history, as far as I know. Uh, there, were, there were Pfaff, the German company, that German brand Pfaff had their own version of this. Uh, as did almost every other brand of sewing machine. Remember that patents don't last forever. So when Singer's patents ran out for some of these machines, Singer could keep making them, but so could the Japanese when they made their clones and uh, other companies as well. But I don't know that anyone did it quite as well as Singer did. And this is, this is uh, a machine that was called the farmer's machine because Again, you could sew through just about anything if you could get it under the foot. And uh, again, is it, is it the best machine for you or me? I don't know. It depends on what you're going to do. So I often like to ask people, tell me, uh, when, they, when they're looking for a machine for me, but they don't know which one or which model, we have a conversation. I ask questions. Tell me what you're going to sew. How heavy is it? Um, you know, depending on the object that they're trying to create, they may need zigzag, in which case these machines won't help them, but maybe you don't need zigzag. Um, and again, this is one of the friendliest machines you'll ever, you'll ever use.
or, or overhaul and restore for that matter. Thanks for watching everyone. You'll be seeing more videos about the Singer 1591 as I go through uh, and begin taking it apart and looking at its um, various systems and what's, what's needed. And then I'll also do a video, like I say, we'll come and do a little inspection, uh, kicking the tires, see what I brought home. And I'll show you guys, uh, most, most of the things I find are normal. I've been doing this long enough. I'm, I'm not surprised most of the time at the condition that some of these machines are in. Uh, and we'll talk about that and things that you can do to ameliorate any of the issues you might find. Uh, because these machines are almost never broken beyond repair. And that's, that's a heck of a thing to be able to say, but it's true. It's uh, one of the things I love about them so much. They were just so well made. And uh, even when they haven't been well cared for, uh, once they're given the, the time, the TLC, the love and attention, all is forgiven and they crank right up. Stay tuned for more videos coming soon and thanks for watching.